Hey scrapbookers, this is Trisha at Club Scrap with the beautiful May collection called Damask. And I can't wait to show you how to put this all together. We've got a beautiful collection here with our printed and plain papers, ribbons, photo mats, a stencil, some embellishments, and some washi tape. Um, this is a beauty, and what I love about it most is that it is incredibly neutral. So whatever you happen to be scrapbooking at this time, I think this kit's going to work for you. I've got my printed instructions, the accordion pocket file to keep myself organized, and of course my Fiskars trimmer. So if you need any of those things, please reach out to us. We can help connect you with everything you need to be successful in your scrapbooking. Okay, so the first thing that we usually do is try to get our papers in the order in which we'll be using them. So let's sort through the stack and we'll get our papers arranged. We're going to begin with this dark blue uh, metallic print. So we've used a gold and a silver metallic ink on this and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Let's get that one set aside and I'm putting it plain side up on my on my trimmer base. Next we'll need um, the ivory print. So it's ivory on the on the back side. It's got a beautiful um, print on the front. And then we do need one ivory plane from your stack of papers. So find that. And then how about a dark red plane? So there are two shades of red here. Make sure you have the one that's the darkest. Then usually from the back of the stack we're gonna find a sheet of cut aparts that are long narrow strips and another sheet of cut aparts that have other shapes on them. Next, we will sort the papers that we will use starting with the base for layout eight and work our way up to layout one. So our next needed piece is going to be um, a dark red plane. So that's the other one. There we go. And then an uh, ivory print. So the other one like, that looks like this. Um, for the base of layout six, we'll use an ivory plane and a blue print. And again, I'm putting those um, all face down on my trimmer because I'm building it from the bottom up here. And then we'll do two light red. It's kind of more of a terracotta color. And then two of the light blue planes. So that's our order from front to back here. And I flipped it back over to the top where we will start with this beautiful dark blue print. Okay, so I'm going to turn to page two of the instructions, and if you ever have any doubt about how something should be positioned into the trimmer, I always put the picture of the print right in the instructions so that you know the orientation before you trim. So let's place this into the trimmer with the dotted border on our left, and let's cut it six and a quarter. So right up here, six plus one column to the left is six and a quarter. And if you're new to this trimmer, make sure you push on that clear stabilizing bar before you make every cut. And then slide down to four and three quarters. Okay, so the two largest pieces you created, put them both in the pocket for one and two. And I, if you're using this folder, I put the pieces in at an angle so I can still see the numbers. Um, but I avoid putting it in vertically so I don't put too much weight on the pocket and then there's also a narrow strip here you can't see much left of the print on this at all that goes in five and six okay another easy one here we're going to place this into the trimmer with the darkest area on the bottom and make two cuts the first one's at eight and a half and then three and a half so the piece in the base of your trimmer right now goes in five and six then you have this larger piece, this is seven and eight, and file this other narrow one in pocket three and four. Here we'll have the ivory plane, so just wanna make sure it's plain on both sides, you're cutting the right piece. The first cut might be a little bit foreign to you, it's 11 and 3 eighths. So what I do to find that is at first if you look and you've got 11, then 11 and a quarter. Now halfway between 11 and a quarter and 11 and a half, You'll find that medium sized little hash mark there. That's 11 and 3 eighths. And then 10 and 3 quarters. And 6. And once we get to 6, we'll just do that rotation. And we're going to make two photo mats. So we'll cut horizontally at 8 and 4. Gather up. Uh, take one of these 4 by 6s that can go in 7 and 8. And the other two 4x6s will be filed in 3 and 4. Pick up the next piece. We're going to make another classic series of cuts. The first one is at 11 and a quarter, 7 and a half, and 3 and 3 quarters. All three of these pieces will go in pocket 1 and 2. 
And finally, you have two really narrow strips. Um, we'll put one in pocket one and two, and the other in seven and eight. All right, I'm moving right along to the dark red plane. I will point out we did create a very small scrap in that last trimming of the ivory. All right, so let's trim this at 11. Nice whole number for you. And six and a half. Then rotate, and we'll cut this piece horizontally at 11 and a quarter. Nine, nice whole number. Four and a half. Take the piece in the base of your trimmer and file that in one and two. And the other larger piece here will go in five and six. Then you have a kind of a narrow rectangle. Let's trim this horizontally at three and a quarter. One of these pieces, this three and a quarter inch piece, will go in pocket one and two, and the other goes in five and six. There's a real narrow strip here. Add that to that huge pile of scraps we won't be using. <laughs> okay, now this next wide piece. Let's trim this horizontally at six and a half. And file this large piece into pocket seven and eight. Now you're left with this uh, kind of a wide rectangle here. We'll trim this vertically at two and a half. So when you put it in the trimmer, make sure the four and a half side is on the top edge here. And we'll cut at two and a half. Take this piece that you just created and put it in one and two. And then you have another narrow rectangle. We're, we're going to trim this horizontally at two and three quarters. You just made a pair of rectangles that'll both go in seven and eight. There's a narrow strip. File that in three and four. If you're following along in the instructions, this is the part where I turn to page one. And I'm going to look at the images of these cut aparts right here at the bottom. And we'll start out with the stripes and we'll put the piece into the trimmer with the narrowest piece on the right. And again, for any newbies I have joining me today, you'll notice these really faint registration marks that you'll find at the top and bottom edges of the cut apart sheet. And the beauty of using this particular trimmer is that I can see exactly where that little gray hash mark will meet the edge of my blade on my trimmer. If you look at both the top and the bottom edge, you can see on the outside of that stainless steel blade exactly where the cut will happen. Of note, I also have this piece in the trimmer at 11 inches to remove this one inch strip off the end. Let the pieces pile up as we move down the line, and here we are at 10 inches, and I'm also aligning those hash marks with the edge of my blade. Another slide takes us to about nine and a quarter. And just continue working your way down until all the pieces are separated. So I will stack all of these up. It's I find it's easier if you have everything picked up in the order it landed and it's in your hands. You can easily deal out um, the pieces into their appropriate pockets. So this uh, this first piece with the two square um, squares in the middle goes on one and two. And then we have this longer piece here that starts with the stories. That's seven and eight. The blue strip goes in three and four. The burgundy strip with the quote goes in five and six. Then we have a narrow border strip here that goes in seven and eight. Our dark blue strip goes in three and four. We have another wider burgundy strip that's five and six. And right back where we started with this dotty strip, that's one and two. This next piece has some um, words that are designed to be cut out individually, but I'll trim those into strips and work my way down. Just always be careful that you won't cut through any artwork. This is the last vertical cut I can make before I need to do a rotation, and because these are the smallest pieces, we'll remove those first. So this large frame will be filed in seven and eight. And then this smaller burgundy quote that says live life also goes in seven and eight. And let's trim these into four individual rectangles. I think I'm going to just do it at the same time. And all of the pieces will go in pocket three and four. And let's separate the pieces on this next strip, including um, these guys on the end. This large blue piece will be filed in three and four. You have a horizontal journaling prompt with a burgundy border that also goes in three and four. Here's a vertical journaling prompt. 
um, that goes in five and six. And then another horizontal prompt with a uh, taupe border will be filed in one and two along with these two little guys. Okay, the piece, this larger give piece will be filed in one and two. And then the next three pieces you'll notice have a decorative frame around them, and this is entirely up to you, but I did take just a few minutes and used scissors to trim around the outer edge of these frames. You could leave them just as they are, maybe ink the edges if you want, but I kind of liked the look of the frame, and I had a little bit of time to do it, but if you really want to save time, just skip that step. Um, this uh, love always will be filed in, in um, five and six, and then the two other little frames will be in seven and eight. The same is true for this frame. You could cut it out or just leave it as is. File this in seven and eight. This dotted border piece goes in one and two. And then on this one, it does it create a tag shape. And if you happen to have a corner chomper with a half inch setting, you can insert the upper corners of these two tag pieces into that punch before you file them in five and six. So we have these strips that have words on them and I did use them on my pages so if you want to take scissors and just trim out the word live simply and dream big if you want you can take the little ends off in between both of these were used actually the, the first four quotes so be grateful and if you want you can use a trimmer for this too and give love all four of these are used in layouts three and four so I'll just pop those into that pocket and then laugh lots and love this both used in one and two the other sheet has two additional uh, quotes that can be cut apart and assembled on your pages if you like. Um, I didn't use mine yet, but um, it's kind of a matter of personal preference. If you want to incorporate these two quotes into your pages, go for it. All right, now that does conclude the trimming portion. Let's get going on some assembly tips. Before we do our assembly, I did forget to file our photo mats, and I usually do that first, so that explains why. Um, we need one ivory photo mat added to the pocket for layouts one and two. And then we need two light blue photo mats in pocket three and four. And two dark red photo mats in three and four. Let's add one light blue photo mat in pocket five and six. Three dark blue photo mats also in five and six. Two ivory and one red will be added to seven and eight. Now, the other thing you might notice is I have two little Velcro dots I've added. These are like hook and loop dots added to the front, not the flap, but the front of my accordion pocket file. And their mates are on the back of my trimmer. I chose to put them here because the top of the trimmer has a slight curve, but if you add these to the trimmer, the likelihood of this falling down decreases substantially. So there's a little tip for you, and those um, hook and loop dots are available on our website if you're interested in picking up some of those. We sell them in a pack of 100, so they're, you can use them all kinds of projects, but they work great uh, with keeping that um, accordion pocket file where you want it to be. Okay, so let's now begin with the base for layout eight, which is going to be this dark red plane. And that should be the piece on the top of the remaining stack of 12 by 12s that you have. And I'll take everything out of pockets seven and eight. Looking at the right side of the layout here, I can stretch this piece along the right edge, pretty much flush with that edge. And that'll give me room to add two photo mats horizontally along the left edge. And there should be a larger dark red piece Place that vertically on the right side, and then you should be able to nest this piece right on top of it. Beneath that, we'll add this really cool frame. And again, if you have a minute to trim around that frame, it'll look really pretty on there. Same, same with these other two pieces. Um, I love this. Celebrate your life and honor those who made it possible. I put those side by side at the bottom of the page, overlapping slightly. And then around this piece, we have this gorgeous red ribbon and I think you have to have this in your hand to just really hold it and appreciate how beautiful this ribbon is. Um, I simply just wrapped it around the bottom of this mat and tied a knot and trimmed the ends at a nice angle.
Here is the finished layout with that gorgeous bow. I kind of had the ends arranged here so that it doesn't cover up the text. And you can see how sweet those embellishments become when you're able to cut around the outer frame. If you have imperfections in your trimming, which I actually do, um, you can take a ink applicator and some coordinating ink and then just rub that onto the edges and that really does hide those imperfections. However, I did not do that in this case. And then we'll set this all aside and move on to finishing layout seven. We've got a nice border strip running vertically and then another one horizontally here. I want to show you something fun we were able to do with that. We've got a, a nice vertical photo mat here and a smaller piece down below. So sometimes when you're trying to assemble a layout, oh, I did forget this strip from layout eight, so I'll go over and add it to that. We have this nice quote here to balance things out and two smaller little vertical mats here. Now, if yeah. you're looking at this clear ivory strip and you look in the picture of the completed layout, they're very different. And here's something cool. We have a gorgeous roll of washi tape. And I thought it was going to be a good match, but when it was delivered to the warehouse, I was really thrilled with how beautiful <laughs> this turned out. I just couldn't believe it. So you just stretch some of that tape onto the ivory border strip and that creates the contrast we need to be able to see this. And that's why we cut it at that weird width. It was, there's, this is five eighths of an inch. And that looks really nice behind there. And then we can balance the ribbon usage from the right side of the layout onto the layout seven just by tying a small bow around this cut apart. Let me show you the finished page. And here you can see that beautiful washi tape. The ribbon is added. These two pieces are placed at a slight angle and then one slightly higher than the other to avoid some tangent potential over here. And as a whole, I think this layout looks really beautiful. All ready for pictures. Let's move on to layout six. We'll begin with an ivory base and then we've got a, a larger piece of this ivory print and I think I'll put with a dark red side on the top and that's flush with the right edge. To anchor everything horizontally, I'm gonna nest um, that remnant from the dark blue print with this other border here going across. And then I'll rest two slightly angled mats here. Again, one just a little bit higher than the other and I'll cross over the line of this vertical piece. And then I'm gonna tuck right underneath there. I'll take one of these, uh, this vertical journaling prompt and nest it onto the dark red and kind of tuck that behind here to hide the edge. Then this can rest on the border strip up top and we'll finish with this love always sentiment with ribbon, a loop of ribbon at the top and the bottom. On the finished page, you can see how sweet that ribbon looks. And I did add a little height to this cut apart with some of our foam adhesive circles. So if you don't have any of these, I highly recommend grabbing a strip. What I love about them is that each circle has a little pull tab and I'm pretty conservative with my use. It's a nice strong adhesive, two-sided, and I just cut them in half. So on a situation like this I just have four halves, one in each corner, and that really gives it just a nice little pop and gives me room to make these beautiful ribbon loops. And I did that with the satin gold edged ribbon that's included in your kit. The next page will start with the dotted border running across the top and then we'll balance that border with this other cut apart toward the bottom. And to kind of highlight that, stretch a piece of gold edged ribbon just above it. And what I usually do is just trim it to a little bit wider than the layout itself. And then tape the ends around to the back just with, with, with regular tape. And then if you want to add a bow to it, just tie the ribbon onto the ribbon. There's no need to use all the ribbon going completely around the entire page. You just want to wrap the ends around to the back. We can nest a pair of these photo mats. Now again, this is a four and a quarter by six and a quarter mat, and the one behind it is larger at four and a half by six and a half. We trimmed that. So you still have room for a four by six photo here. And then a pair of quotations. Now, of course, you can add more photos if you don't like to just have one photo on a page. I completely understand. Um, but I I'm sorry, I had a hard time covering up this beautiful print, so I just kept it to one single photo, but by all means, add more if you like it. You could even just relocate these pieces and have more room for pictures if, if you'd like to go that route. Here's the finished layout with that beautiful bow added to the lower left corner. And again, the pieces are just taped at the back and the bow is tied on to the stretched ribbon. I also chose to add two small um, mini brads from my stash to the top of the tags. Before we get started on 
piecing the elements onto this layout, I want to show you how I added the stenciling to my page. And I actually drew myself a guideline about five inches down from the top edge. And to do that, I'm just going to hijack a second ruler here. My ruler here is only three inches wide, and this is two inches wide. So three plus two is five. Therefore, if I put both of these rulers together side by side on the base of my page, I can then draw myself a five inch guideline just level across the upper half of this page. So if you were to stencil this area above my, like using my pencil mark as a like straight edge, so now I know exactly where I can place my stencil so everything remains level and just where I want it. So you can tell I've used this stencil and I'm aligning the bottom edge of the artwork with my pencil guideline. And I'll grab, this is a mahogany, a club scrap hybrid ink and I've got our ink applicators here and I usually start out by thoroughly just rubbing the foam applicator onto the stencil I'm sorry onto the ink pad rather until it's nicely loaded you certainly have the option to use some sort of a adhesive or um, painters tape or something to hold the stencil in place it depends on your experience level um, I feel pretty confident with my stenciling, so I simply hold it firmly with uh, my fingertips of the non-stenciling hand. Of course, I'm right-handed, so um, I'm just rubbing ink. And once I made that initial heavier application of ink onto the sponge, it's pretty well loaded, and all I need to do is just make occasional trips back to the pad for, for a quick reload. Nice. I think it's going to be nice. Let's move the stencil and see what we have. Absolutely beautiful. So then I'm going to line up the straight edge again because the stencil is designed to, re to make a repeating pattern if you do it from edge to edge like this. So even though there might be a real slight seam, it's probably just like wallpaper hanging in the dining room. The, the paper is designed to have a repeating pattern. So if you, if you get your seams lined up properly, it'll look like one continuous piece. There you can see the seam of the two stencils working beautifully together. And I just have one last little section to piece together to finish the, the complete 12 inches of this page. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. I did do some additional stenciling on um, page three, the other light red base. I, stenc I stenciled this whole section. Um, and again, that's a matter of personal preference, but for uh, just saving some time, um, we'll place the remaining pieces on this layout number four. We have a nested border I'm going to have going across. So what this does is this is the equivalent of your chair rail in your dining room. You got your wallpaper, your chair rail, and your oak wall, right? So this is my chair rail dividing the space of the stenciled and non-stenciled area. So I didn't have to really do the whole thing. And then we can enjoy some nice double nested photo mats here on the bottom. We'll go straight and vertical on these. How about a little sentiment right here with some journaling opportunity beneath it? Let's take one of those red, dark red photo mats up in the right corner. And then I used this dark red rectangle. I tied some ribbon below on the lower half of this rectangle and then added the words, give love to the rectangle. You could ink the edges of that if you want. You could skip it all together. It's totally up to you. You could put a photo there. Whatever you've got going on, it's your page, right? Okay, so let's take a look at that finished one. I did add that emblem, the bronze emblem that comes in your kit. But um, here you can see that, I don't know if you can see the gold, metallic gold woven into this grow grain. It's so pretty. Now this wrap, when you first get it, it's going to have a real slight dome shape to it. So what I'd recommend you do here, and it's very pliable, which I love about this, extremely pliable. So flatten it as much as you can. Get rid of that dome shape. Then take some book binding glue and a needle tip applicator and try to get all of the raised areas of the emblem on the back. And then, and then just simply attach it right over here on the top of this blue decorative element on the cut apart. Again, for layout three, I did do some stenciling, but I'm going to skip that for now that you know how to do it. I'll put the darkest red area up here on the top of this strip and then neighbor it with this cut apart and then accent all of this again with another flattened emblem. 
And I built this kind of fun embellishment grouping. So I've got the photo mat here. That's right, I have it on the border. And then I took three of these rectangles and aligned them vertically. So a dark blue, a light blue, and a red. Then we have these three little rectangular quotes. So I took Be Grateful. That'll go on the upper portion and overlap into this square. Then Live Simply kind of starts on the left edge and overlaps into the red square. And Dream Big starts sort of in the middle and overlaps into the right, to the right of the edge of this. I took Blue Ribbon and just tied a bow one lower and then one on the top of this one. I'll show you the finished page. Here we have just the two bows, the three sentiments, and the three rectangles. It's a really cool hand-built embellishment that has a lot of dimension and you still have room for more pictures. And again, if you would rather keep more space for photographs, that's totally your call. Um, I just like to have it so if you have a minimum amount of photos, those, those cut aparts really help us finish those pages in beautiful ways without having to do a lot to make a gorgeous title. All right, everything is out of pocket one and two. This is the light blue base for this last pair of pages. And I'm gonna add this gorgeous section of the dark blue print to this with the most printed area in the upper right corner. And then you've got a little bit swagging out over here. And we have a divider. So right now, all it is is the cut apart with the dotties on it. But what's cool is that the opening between the two layers of dots is wide enough for us to, to add another strip of that washi tape to the strip. It's so pretty. And then um, I'm going to add three ivory pieces to the left edge and I've trimmed them in such a way that they're only three and three quarter inches tall, which then allows me to have equal spacing between those th three pieces. And when I adhere these to my pages, I want to make sure they're evenly spaced and level with the edge of my layout. So I take my ruler and I put the ruler on the edge of the page so that I have a reading of six here, zero here, six there. And the first piece I will adhere is going to be the center one. Then the other two can go on either side. And that way I know these three pieces are nice and level and beautifully spaced. On the right edge, I built a little collage here. So we've got this long, narrow, dark red strip that should nest perfectly with this cut apart. Same with this, you got a journaling prompt and then a really, um, a dark red mat to go with that and then we have these two other little rectangles I took some of this ribbon and made a loop and added the ribbon to the right edge and I also took that laugh lots simply cut it in half with your scissors and put the laugh in this opening and the lots in this opening <laughs> you have a sweet little handmade embellishment going on over here with the finished layout you can see the loops and what did i use to attach this to the page you guessed it my um, foam adhesive circles again i just sliced one of them in half and used half on each side really pops it up nicely and added a bit of ribbon to the bottom of this cut apart to finish things up i have the remaining pieces on the light blue layout base let's run this gorgeous um, dark blue print across the middle and we're going to flank that below with this um, cut apart and then remember we've got another one of these 5 8 inch plain ivory strips and you can go ahead and add guess what your beautiful scrolled washi tape to the strip then vertically on the right we've got that ultra large dark red piece I know I hated covering I hated covering this piece went right to the edge with it kind of and nest onto a 4 by 6 photo mat then this piece placed vertically there if we take the love this and we cut it in half, we can stack the words, love this. <laughs> love this, right? And then take some of that light blue grow grain metallic infused ribbon and just tie a little bow around there. Here's finished layout number one. Once again, lots of room for pictures. I just didn't have the heart to cover that beautiful print. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much and congratulations. All that's left to do now is to adhere everything and complete your pages with photos from your stash. I hope you find it to be very neutral and very accommodating no matter what event you have coming up. Have a great month and we'll see you next time.